At this time of the year, one of my favorite things to do is to reminisce about Christmas's past. In fact, one of my favorite conversation starters for this season is, tell me about your best Christmas. For many, this question stirs visions of childhood magic. Snow-shrouded wonderlands, Christmas parades with floats and marching bands, stockings bulging with fruit and candy canes, and fond memories of loved ones, some no longer with us. I have a few candidates for best Christmas. There was the year I found the Mattel Sonic Blaster under the Christmas tree. Made of black molded plastic, it was a bazooka-like air cannon. Pump it a few times, they recommend it three times, pull the trigger and shoot a blast of compressed air. Soon enough, my brother, who spent some time in the Contra thing back years ago, and I, 29 years in the military, we figured out that you could use this thing as a weapon. You put plastic balls down the tube, pump it up, and you can shoot them all the way across the street. Over time, we also discovered it was possible to pump this thing up more than three times. You could really get a solid blast. And that continued for a while until one day we pumped it at one time too many and blew out the air chamber. Still, it was a great toy, and it made a great Christmas. Then there was the Christmas morning I received a blue Schwinn five-speed English bike. Now, some of you that are of my age, you know that in the old days, that's what we called those bikes with the gears and the brakes. And the, they were English bikes. Well, for a few years, I had badgered my parents endlessly, as only a child who knows nothing of juggling a family budget could do, right? Well, that Christmas, my brother also got a Schwinn bike, a blue Stingray with a silver sparkled banana seat, fastback handlebars, and a stick shift style gear changer. What a great Christmas. Oh, the miles we put on those bikes, riding all over West Durham to play baseball, to deliver newspapers, and to go down to the park and play. That Christmas ranks up there near the top. And then one Christmas, my missing miniature collie came home. Puddin, that was his name. One of the smartest dogs I've ever seen. When he was a puppy, he rode around in my newspaper bag as I would roll up papers and throw them, and he would ride with me. But later, as he got bigger, he would walk by my side. And in the mornings when I would deliver the newspapers at 3 and 4 o'clock in the morning, I would park, he would get out, walk with me. One year, a few days before Christmas, Puddin didn't come home at night. Um, the whole family joined in and looked all over West Durham for several days, but we could not find him. And I'll tell you, that year there was no joy on Christmas Eve, no sense of expectation. We all had heavy hearts because we all loved that little dog. The next morning when I shuffled into the living room, not expecting much, lying in front of the trees, I, I couldn't believe what I saw. There was Puddin' with a big red bow on him. My mother gave me a big hug and told me how when she had opened the door earlier, he was there. He was lying on the step. He was hurt and moved slowly, so she picked him up, placed him in front of the tree, and stuck a Christmas bow on him. In a week or two, he was back to normal, and he never ran off again, by the way. What a great Christmas present that was. All of these Christmases just don't measure up to my best Christmas. For a while, my best Christmas was one that occurred in the early 90s. Uh, I spent 91, 92 in Korea, separated from my family. I had missed Christmas, but I made it home for mid-tour leave early in January, and that was not too bad. Joan had uh, kept the tree up, and so the kids got a kick out of celebrating two Christmases, one with mom and one with dad. And uh, they enjoyed it because I brought all kinds of wonderful gifts that I had been uh, working to accumulate during my time in Korea. So years passed. And this, because I was with my family after that long separation, this was my best Christmas. But sometime later in 2004, the Army stepped into my life again. I was deployed to Iraq and not programmed to return home until January 2005. Somehow the government messed up. I know that comes as a great shock to you that that can happen. Uh, our redeployment got moved up 
So the new headquarters showed up in November, not December, and we can't have both of us occupying the same space. So we were accelerated in terms of our return. And so uh, events moved quickly. I found myself at the uh, transient tents at Balad Air Base in Iraq, waiting for a C-130 transport with my name on it. And sure enough, within a couple of days, in the wee hours of the morning, my Freedom Bird showed up, and within three days, I was back on American soil. And so there we were at Fort Sam Houston, and we did something that had never been heard of. We out-processed within less than a week. And so on December the 23rd, in 2004, I landed at Greenville Spartanburg Airport. Waiting for me in the terminal were my wife, Joan, and our three kids, Matthew, a junior here at the college, Colin and Allison, both high school students at Greenwood Christian School. And there they were with welcome home signs and balloons. A few days before, I was in a place where people were shooting rockets and mortars at us almost every day, and now I was home, safe with my loved ones. They say home is where the heart is, and my heart was exactly where I'd left it a year before. As we sat at the kitchen table for Christmas dinner, never, never have I felt so grateful. Beyond question, this was, is, and always will be my best Christmas, because I was with those I loved the most. I was with those I had feared I might never see again. Some time ago, as I was thinking of my best Christmas, another thought came to mind. My best Christmas was all about being safe at home with my loved ones. What a contrast with the first Christmas. Certainly, Mary and Joseph welcomed Jesus at his birth, but the people that Jesus came for, not so much. They rejected him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him, John 1, 11. At the first Christmas, Jesus was not safe at home. For Luke plainly states that he was born away from his hometown of Nazareth in a stable in Bethlehem in a manger because there was no room for him in the end, Luke 2, 7. As the Son of Man, Jesus later said, I have nowhere to lay my head. After his birth, Herod tried to find Jesus so he could put him to death, Matthew 2, 16 through 18. Later, Paul wrote the church at Philippi that Jesus, who was in the very form of God, that is, he truly was God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. So at the first Christmas, Jesus was born of a woman born under the law to redeem those who were under the law, and he became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross, Philippians 2.8. From the battlements of glory, the Son of God, who is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of His nature, Hebrews 1.3, stepped into a world of sinful men where there was no peace and there was no safety. The one who created the world very good and even now upholds the universe by the word of His power became a servant only to be rejected and put to death by the covenant people He came to deliver. What a stunning paradox. I do think that there is, however, a common thread that runs through all of our favorite Christmas memories, my best Christmas of 2004, and the first Christmas when Jesus was born. James 1-7 tells us, every good and perfect gift is from above. Coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows? No. There's something godlike in the act of giving, whether that giving involves toys, bikes, answered prayers for missing pets, or airplanes to take a weary warrior home from the war zone. But most godlike of all is Jesus. For he is God, Emmanuel, God with us. Clearly, the Son is God's greatest gift, indeed, God's incomparable gift. And it is only in the light of that first Christmas that we can accurately measure 
and properly understand the blessings of every other Christmas and every other gift. We can talk today about our best Christmas, but we can only do so because long ago God gave his best at the first Christmas.